Hi, I'm Lisa Weeks, and I am weird. <laughs> I am also Filters Marketing Director. Filters is a digital agency here in Seattle specializing in digital content and the people who create it. And Filter is also weird, but we'll get to that in just a minute. So what do I mean by weird? Well, weird is inherently difficult to define because weird is relative. What is weird to some may be perfectly normal to others and vice versa. And as Morticia Adams says, what is normal for the spider is chaos for the fly. And what's normal for this spider is costuming and theater. It's hardwired into my DNA. It's something I've been doing ever since I could walk and get into my mother's closet and put together a costume or an outfit, play dress up. And needless to say, Halloween became very, very important to me. And I thought it was weird that my fellow first grade comrades weren't planning their Halloween costumes in July, like I was. <laughs> so how did this all come to happen in this particular context? Well, a little background. I grew up with an Atari 2600, and I fell in love with video games and comic books and all things geek, and that led me to Japanese pop culture and the hobby of cosplay. And cosplay is a combination of costume and play, usually manifesting itself in dressing up as one's favorite character from a video game or anime or comic book series. And when I found this hobby of cosplay, I was like, oh my god, I'm home. I have found my tribe. There's a whole community out there of like-minded people with a passion that I had for costuming and video games, a seemingly kind of bizarre mashup. So there I am on the bike in the midst of some of my tribe at Anime Expo 2004. And ultimately, my tribe really gave me the strength that I needed and the strength to fuse my personal passion into a professional persona. And I was really, really fortunate in that I had a lot of support in my family and growing up, and they always supported my crazy costuming shenanigans. And once I got out there into the workforce and started my career trajectory, I noticed that wasn't quite the case. <laughs> and I had a lot of people, a lot of people I really respected and admired, a lot of mentors tell me, you know, you should probably keep that cosplay thing a secret. <laughs> you probably shouldn't let people know that you get all dressed up in vinyl and wigs and go parading around at Comic-Con <laughs> downtown Seattle. They probably won't get it. They probably won't understand. And it'll probably hold you back. And I was like, well, OK. And I tried that for a while. And it didn't work. And it was pretty obvious that whatever I was passionate about, I was going to reveal that in any circle, if it was personal circles, professional circles, no matter what. And ultimately, I think that's what landed me in marketing is because marketing is inherently all about costuming and theater from a certain point of view. And I thought, well, if there's any field that's going to give me a platform for how I believe I can make my weird work, it would be in marketing. And then I kind of was thinking about that too. It's like, well, you know, cosplay is really sort of the ultimate form of flattery for a marketer because it takes a lot of brand engagement to want to dress up as an actual persona or a brand. So it's, it's pretty flattering. But this isn't, this isn't a talk about cosplay or marketing and all this. This is a talk about the economy of weird and how I really truly believe that weird does work. So, this is me at work. <laughs> this is me at our 8-bit lounge at the filter booth at the Seattle Interactive Conference in 2011. And here is also me at work. This is Halloween. I made a costume in homage to Hitchcock's The Birds, which is one of my all-time favorite movies. And interestingly enough, this is the only time I have ever worn a suit to work. <laughs> And that got me thinking. I was like, you know, this is interesting. And this is interesting because we have a lot of cultural stories and a lot of legends, and especially legends that we tell our children. And of course, most obviously in this particular case, um, the one of Superman comes to mind because he's inherently weird. He's not from this planet. And he has to dress up in the costume of Clark Kent in order to fit in with the rest of us Earthlings. And I was thinking about that, and I was also thinking about um, Puff the Magic Dragon, in how Jackie Draper had to create a completely different persona of Jackie Paper in order to visit his magical friend, Puff the Magic Dragon, in Honolulu. And even as a kid, I would think to myself, why? 
why do you need two separate personas to do that? And why do you have to leave one behind? Why do you have to leave all the whimsy and fun and imagination of childhood behind in order to grow up and be successful in your career? <laughs> so it's also not without risks, because you might be saying to me, well, fine, that's all well and good for you, Lisa. You're in a creative field. You're a marketing director for a creative agency. So yeah, OK, I get it. But this is also very risky, even for me, even in a creative environment. There are people that don't get it. I've been at networking events. Here I am in full cosplay regalia for a Tron-themed event that Filter hosted at GeekWire. And I've had people stop me and right in the middle of an elevator pitch and go, I'm sorry, I'm just having a really hard time taking you seriously in that getup. And I was like, that's OK. That's no harm, no foul. That's, that's fine. And that's, that's one of the risks that you take. But if you do this and you approach it very authentically, the people that do get it are going to appreciate it all the more and are going to have a lot of fun with it. We definitely have a lot of fun with it. So over the past about 20 years of doing this in my career, I have formulated a theory. And it is a theory of weirdness <laughs> relativity. And it basically states that weirdness plus time times consistency and authenticity minus any bullshit equals normal. <laughs> and basically it states that if you do something with conviction, with passion, it's from the heart. It's not just weirdness for weird sake or weird to you know, get lots of press coverage out of it. Then over time, if you do it well and if you do it from the heart, it does become normal and your audience eventually will get it. Like case in point. This particular fellow, Tony Shea of Zappos. So he's definitely weird, and he's got some really key ideas about how weird works. And he's infused his brand of weird into his company and done a fantastic job with this, and I'm very inspired by this personally, because he doesn't wear a wig to do this. He doesn't dress up in a costume to do this. He is just who he is. He believes in weird, and he's made it work. In fact, the Zappos core value number three is create fun and a little weirdness. And that very last sentence there, when you combine a little weirdness with making sure everyone is also having fun at work, it ends up being a win-win for everyone. Employees are more engaged in the work that they do, and the company as a whole becomes more innovative. The economy of weird. So even though I've had the pleasure of being Filter's poster child for their own internal value of weird, this wasn't just me. Um, it, it was everybody at the company, and we were very, very inspired by Tony Shea and by authenticity, and that there's a lot of talk about authenticity lately. And so we went through a really great exercise with every single employee, and we found that there were commonalities. And we came up with our own tribal values based on the commonalities from every individual person and what they held dear. And that's why this means so much to us at Filter, is because this isn't a mission statement. These aren't corporate mandates. These are guidelines by and for the people of how to do business internally and externally. And even though, yes, yeah, I, I was definitely the poster child, this isn't anything new <laughs> for Filter by any means. I just had the good fortune to be the one to say, hey, you know what, Filter? You don't need to keep doing that Clark Kent thing anymore. You can go ahead and wear your capes to work, or your weird hats in this case. So it's a whole new world of work out there, and I look forward to a whole new economy of weird. <laughs>